Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. It's a very beautiful day here at the park. Uh, very green as it is in the early springtime and so beautiful. Uh, I really love the bright green colors that we have this time of year in Japan. Uh, it's, it's much, everything looks so new and fresh and it smells so wonderful here. Uh, it's, it's of course going to remain green and through the end of the summer, but as the, the year goes on and it gets hotter and more humid, the greens here tend to get a little darker and I guess shadier, but uh, right now everything is a very beautiful, bright and I guess wonderfully light green. One of my favorite photographers is the British photographer. Uh, James Revelius, and I remember him talking about uh, the color green and his problems with it because in the countryside in England where he lived everything was green and it was very difficult for him to take photos where everything was uh, such, I guess, uh, a lack of any other colors and to kind of get away from getting green and everything he preferred to shoot in black and white. Uh, for myself, uh, I love the green color, especially this time of year, and in the early spring, of course, we have the beautiful flowers to go with it. Uh, wonderful day. Uh, after I'm finished with my videos today, I plan to go and get something to eat and drink and come back here and relax for a few minutes in the park. Uh, it, it should be a wonderful day. So, uh, the subject of today's video is another Olympus rangefinder camera. Now, this particular camera is the Olympus 35S, which dates from about 1955. For those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras at my online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I also have an Etsy store, and my Etsy store is also called Japan Vintage Camera. So if you're interested in purchasing this camera, or another vintage Japanese camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So the Olympus 35S was uh, Olympus' first uh, 35mm full-frame, widely, I guess, major market camera. Uh, the one which they used to jump into the new 35mm format. For a number of years, Olympus had produced the Olympus 6, which was quite a popular large format camera shooting 120 roll film, and which shot in either the 6x45 or 6x6 uh, format. But, uh, these formats began to die out or decline in popularity in the mid-1950s as 35mm film became more popular and uh, I guess more options were made available for it. 35mm cameras were smaller, a roll of film held a lot more exposures, and uh, improved quality of film allowed you to get good quality uh, images on what was considered a small format at the time. Of course, the earliest formats were the larger formats, uh, 4x5 and bigger, and 120 at one time, 120 roll film, medium format, was considered small format. But 35mm uh, film uh, became really popular, and about the time that this camera was uh, introduced, Olympus was already, uh, I guess, slapping together the last of their Olympus 6 cameras with all the parts they had to, uh, I guess, discontinue production. The 35S turned out to be quite a popular camera and was sold in a number of variations over the next few years. Uh, the 35S was replaced by the 35S2, which is a similar camera but a little bit larger with a larger uh, viewfinder and rangefinder system. And then that was in replaced by a yet uh, more sophisticated 35S with a built-in light beater. And then in the 1960s, uh, Olympus began producing more automatic and I guess a variety of different 35mm cameras. Uh, the 35S, the early version, is, is quite an inter interesting camera. It's very well made, a very simple, clean, and sleek design. Uh, designed entirely in-house by Olympus. It wasn't one of the cameras like other makers put together, which was based upon European designs. Uh, Olympus designed this camera from the ground up, and they did quite a remarkable job with it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the features, functions, and controls of the Olympus 35S, starting at the top. Uh, we have here a film rewind knob, which is similar to uh, the Olympus 6 cameras. In the middle of the knob, we have an indicator, which is kind of a reminder to uh, remind yourself what kind of film you have loaded in the camera or what speed film you have loaded in the camera. Uh, this system is entirely uh, just to remind you. It, it doesn't have any effect on the operation of the camera. Uh, 
So, yeah, uh, some people worry that uh, they put in the film in the camera and they start shooting it and then they realize that they forgot to set the adjustment on the dial and they think that it might have some kind of uh, uh, rea or influence or reaction or the camera won't work right unless this is set to the correct numbers uh, don't worry about it as long as your light meter is set for the, the film speed you are using or if you were uh, shooting according to the film speed you were using don't worry about the dial here it's just a simple reminder in the center here we have a shoe for mounting a flash gun uh, these cameras were designed to use a uh, a flash bulb system and you plug in the flash gun with a flash bulb installed and batteries in the gun and you plug in the flash socket into this PC sync terminal on the lens here. Uh, you can use a more modern flash with this camera by simply following the directions on the flash or instructions which came with the flash. Up to the right here we have the shutter release button which is threaded for a standard cable release and here we have the film winding and shutter charging lever. And this one's quite nice. I, I like this a little bit better than the later Olympus cameras. It looks kind of odd with this round ball thing here, but it's actually very easy and fast to catch with your thumb and it works quite effectively. On the top here, we have a window which uh, shows how many frames you have used in the camera. Uh, quite easy to see. And the counter resets automatically when you open the film door. On the back here we have the viewfinder window and uh, the main drawback to the 35S is that it has a rather small and simple viewfinder system and it's a little bit difficult to use this camera if you wear glasses. Uh, these cameras were made to be rather inexpensive at the time and uh, the technology available when they were designing and building these uh, wasn't that highly advanced yet. Uh, the simple uh, mechanical mechanisms and things like that and the overall structure they were, they were able to do a really good job with that but things like parallax correction and projected frame lines and stuff uh, those weren't introduced until the 35 s2 came out a couple of years after this version but still it, it works quite well and when you are using the viewfinder in this camera as there are no frame lines you simply uh, look at the entire field of view which you see through the viewfinder and that should show roughly the limits of what you're going to see on your image on the bottom of the camera, we have a standard quarter inch tripod socket. It's located a little bit off to the side, which I, I think is a little bit awkward, but uh, it still works well enough. And here we have the button which you use to release the film winding mechanism when you need to rewind your film after you've shot all of the photos on it. Uh, all the important stuff is of course located on the front of the camera. We have a focusing ring with a very nice tab here and it's cut out on either end to allow you to kind of catch it quickly with your thumb or finger and we have a focusing scale which is uh, laid out in feet on this particular camera. In the mid 1950s America was the largest market for cameras produced in Japan and so most of the cameras produced in that time were arranged in feet. Uh, the UK was another market for these cameras and at the time they were still using feet and I don't know if they still use inches or feet so much anymore. I haven't, I've never been to the UK. Uh, uh, that, that was the main reason. Uh, later on, when domestic uh, consumption of cameras increased and people in Europe began buying more cameras, then they, uh, some of the cameras switched to feet and meters and then some just to meters altogether to the metric system. In front of the focusing ring we have the depth of field scale and this allows you to see how much depth of field you have for any given aperture. So if I'm shooting at say f8 which is a really good uh, uh, aperture to use in most conditions and which usually gives you the best performance out of a lens. Uh, if I set uh, f8 to infinity, so anything between say uh, about looks like 10 feet and infinity is going to be in focus. So this makes the cameras quite quite fast to use and that's why rangefinder you know, cameras are quite popular with a lot of street photographers. You can kind of preset an aperture and shutter speed and even the, uh, the focus in order to get really quick shots where you don't have to really fumble around. All you have to do is quickly lift up the camera, frame your shot and push the shutter button and you've captured it. Uh, to make uh, Let's see, uh, to make I guess better use or uh, the focusing scale more convenient, uh, right in front of the focusing scale is the window which shows the aperture selection. Uh, this is a, a wonderful feature and much better than on other cameras where uh, sometimes you had to look at the front of the camera to see what shutter speed and what aperture you, you have selected. Here you can see both the aperture and the shutter speed right in front, so it makes the camera much faster and easier to use. 
As I said, this is the uh, shutter speed ring in the front, and we have a full range of sp speeds from B bulb uh, from one second to one five hundredth of a second. One thing about these old rangefinder cameras is when you are switching to the one five hundredth of a second speed, it's going to be harder to turn, and that's because there is a booster spring which is necessary to get the camera uh, to fire at a really high shutter speed. A lot of people uh, buy cameras and they'll send me a message saying, it works really good, but there's something wrong with the 1 500 shutter speed because it's really hard to turn this, the dial to that speed. That's normal. So if you have one of the cameras which uh, is really stiff going to 1 500 of a second, don't worry about it. It's supposed to be that way. Uh, later cameras with more improved shutters and lighter shutter blades still used a booster spring but the booster spring was lighter so there's not a lot of difference between uh 250 and 500 but it's but on the earlier cameras like the 35s it's very noticeable uh, a great feature of the lens of, of this camera is the lens which is the famous d zuiko lens uh, which olympus claimed was one of their their best lenses and it was certainly their most popular lens the d zuiko was a simple four element lens which they adapted to use in medium format 35 millimeter format and 35 millimeter half frame format and it was used in a large number of different kinds of cameras it was a very well designed lens which offers really great resolution and uh, yeah, as, as I've said in previous videos about uh, very popular lenses, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The Dizuiko was a, a, an outstanding lens and continued to be used up until the 1970s. That shows you how good of a lens it was. There were three different lenses available for the 35S. This is the standard lens for 1955, and it's a 45mm f3.5 lens. Uh, two more lenses were produced, a more sophisticated f2.8 lens and then the f1.9 lens. Uh, which uh, is, a lot of people desire the f1.9 lens. There's a kind of uh, a fetish for uh, fast lenses, which is, uh, which is okay, I guess. Uh, but the bigger lenses are more easily scratched. And, uh, and most of the time, though, I, I kind of have the fast lens fetish myself. I find that I, I rarely actually shoot cameras you know, with the lens wide open. And these old rangefinder cameras where you have a maximum speed of one five hundredth of a second, and the camera's probably not actually shooting that fast because of its age. It's really hard to use uh, the f1.9 setting unless you're shooting in the dark or at night. If you're one of those people who, who likes to get, I guess, the, the really fancy bokeh shots when shooting at people's faces or flowers or things like that in daylight, it's a little bit difficult to use, do with these cameras uh, due to the limitation in shutter speeds. Uh, you're better off with a lens or a camera which has a shutter speed of one thousandth or one two thousandth of a second so you can take advantage of the, the faster glass. Uh, for myself, I like the f3.5 lens, the old Dizuiko. It's wonderful. I, I've shot these lenses a lot in the uh, pin series and I'm always impressed with the quality of the images I get. And of course the, the lens in this camera, the 35S, is going to give better resolution and a little bit better performance than the half frame cameras. Anyway, uh, that's it for my video about the Olympus 35S rangefinder camera. I'll be posting this camera for sale in my online stores tonight or tomorrow as soon as I can find the time to do so. So if you're interested, uh, you'll find it listed there. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.